and see if we're live guys i think so we just have to do one check oh perfect so we're live in a new location the first time i uh, make a video here i moved to another house and um, <clears throat> this is my office i still have an ad hoc where i have to have to where i can set up uh, a gopro uh, and i can make more live streams now i have two screens so i can look at some information here and i can look at what i'm streaming to the audience here um i'm i don't think i will uh, miss one live stream in the future i will not i think live streaming is an essential part of this channel especially uh when i look at the viewers most of them come from the united states also a lot of uh, a lot of them come from germany <clears throat> let me put it like this the dutch car market is not really representative for europe uh, especially the type of cars that I review. They are overpriced uh, sometimes uh, because we pay a lot of tax on cars. I said this before, but I will repeat. Um, we pay a lot of tax for cars, uh, especially cars that are fun with V6s and V8s. It's, it's not really allowed when it comes to our Dutch government. That's the only thing I can say. Um, and today we're going to look at a very special car, the Audi RS6. And I just want to uh, show you some prices. So the Audi RS6 hit the market in May of 2002. Uh, it was the car, the C5, that was the first generation actually. Uh, we had uh, one A6 before that, which started as the Audi 100 out of the top of my head in, in 97. Uh, I still remember the showroom when I visited my dad and it was already 100,000 guilders. Uh, that was before the Euro. Oh, we're going to have some alarm right now because it's the first of the month and it's 12 o'clock. So if you hear some background noise, nice timing. <laughs> um, anyway, so that was the Audi 100 and it was introduced in 97. And during uh, the production run of the Audi 100, it became the first Audi A6. Uh, because Audi rearranged their whole um, uh, types and stuff. Uh, but we are going to focus now on the Audi RS6, and it started in the C5, which was the first real genuine Audi uh, A6. So let's just show you uh, what Audi has, and we're just going to pick the A6. No, we cannot pick the RS6, so we have to pick the A6. And then we're going to not give him anything and we need to give more filters and that's RS6. So Racing Sport 6, this is the most potent Audi out there. And this is what they can all find here in the Netherlands. So I'm very curious what I can show you. Um, 2006. So this is not the first generation, it's the second generation. This is the first generation. This is the uh, C5 I'm, in, I'm talking about. Um, show you this. And I'm very curious about the uh, audio quality and the streaming quality. I upgraded my, my network and uh, uh, now I'm streaming here from this uh, location. But uh, hopefully in the future I can make it a little bit more fancy. Uh, I'm looking forward to make more content in the future really. So... Uh, please leave comments under this video or leave comments in another video like what kind of cars do you want me to stream? I can I can do this for for years, you know, I, I love it Anyway, uh, so this is the first generation uh, Audi RS6 and it had a famous 4.2 V8 uh, a 40 valve so Five valves a cylinder, right? Let's see Let's open this I think from my personal opinion, this is the most beautiful uh, RS6 out there. There's no other way to describe it. It's just, this is that, that early 2000s, late 90s elegance that German cars had. Think about it, at the same moment that the E39 uh, BMW was out and the uh, W211 was out, uh, Mercedes E-Class, they still, of course they dated, but there was just a certain 
uh, moment in time that I think captures the essence of German engineering that I really appreciate. Not even saying that these cars are very good, but it, it was just an era that I really appreciate. It's like, it's simple, but it still has, yeah, wh whoever designed those cars in the days, they, they, they knew it right. And, and it, they stood the test of time because this car, this is a 2002, this is a 2000, so 23 years old. I wouldn't mind having this in the driveway. I wouldn't. This, with all VAG products, it, it, it looks okay, but you can also find it in a normal A6. Like they don't, they don't bother with things that don't really matter that much. But the 4.2 was a beast, very thirsty. Uh, look at these Rogaro seats. They will hug you to sleep if, if needed, but don't do that when you're driving 250 kilometers on the, uh, on the highway. But they can do it and it's all a little bit sober it's like the late 90s early 2000s it's just before everything got more digitalized the internet was just coming up that's how you have to look at it like myself i'm from 85 so i i still remember that time very vividly uh but uh when you when you compare this to a modern audi this is very analog that's all i'm saying and also they had those, uh, I will check later what kind of gearbox they had, but the, the gearboxes from Audi in those days were, were not very good. But it was it was a super sports uh, combination, like a station wagon or combi. And um, oh, okay, it was imported. 230 horsepower. Oh, here they say it's a six-cylinder. I don't know what's happening, but I was thinking 230 for my for my 4.2 V8. What's going on? Mm. Okay, so this is the 2.6, 2.7, six in line. Did we get a shot at the engine? I don't, I don't think so. Okay, this is a bit of a shady car. I don't know. This, this is weird. Also. Uh, immediately give away they don't have a license plate so you cannot really check what's going on you cannot see you cannot do your own research because especially here in the Netherlands we have a license plate there's a lot of history uh, you know connected to that plate did it have a services on time was it imported uh, is the um, the kilometers that is driven is it logical or it's not logical because you have a lot of people, well, well, you have some people that drive, let's say, 100,000 kilometers with a car and they deduct 50K each year in between checks. So then it looks like the car only driven 50, 50, 50, very steady each year, but they did they, they double. With certain cars, you can do that. I'm not sure if the RS6 uh, complies for that, but uh, it's it's done. So moving on, uh, this is... They said it's the FSI, I saw this one, the 2.7 by turbo, but it was also delivered with the V8. But let me just move on then, diesel. I'm not looking for diesel, I'm looking for a proper RS6. Okay, this is the S6 with the 4.2, a young timer with just a little bit more over 100,000 kilometers. Um, is it nice? Yeah, it really, really depends. I think, I think it's nice. I think it's timeless, timeless elegance. Yeah, this, this is, but this is the S6. So this is not the full Monty, it is not the RS, but the S. So this is the sportive version of the uh, A6. Looks nice. Let me check what year it is. Early 2000s. Here, this one has the. Uh, this was the engine I was talking about, the V8, the 4.2. All right. Classy, classy. The dash and everything. It's. Uh, yeah, I like it personally. Like this is very taste sensitive. I think this is way more. Um, quality based and what we have nowadays now we have screens and everything like i don't care about that there's too much going on in cars it should be focused on a good engine that's reliable that's powerful that has a nice torque band a nice good comfortable steering wheel uh, responsible uh, brake pedals and gas pedals uh, a good and very accurate 
um, automatic. And for the rest, I don't care how much features it has um, uh, when it comes to multimedia. What I'm driving and I'm, I'm one with the machine, I don't care if, if I have a good MP3 quality or good SatNav uh, reception or all that stuff. We can all fix that by buying separate devices if needed to. But that's me, that's my personal opinion. But uh, when I look at this dash, this is so late 90s, early 2000s, and I like it. I like that era. In 2000 myself, I was uh, 15. And uh, that's actually where my fascination from cars came from, from the late 90s. And maybe that has something to do with it. Every generation is different, but th this is my generation. And I love it. It's so subtle, like it's only two uh, quad uh, exhaust pipes. The normal car had like a very tiny little miserable little uh, exhaust tip, uh, but this has two. And you see the it's a little bit wider, it's little, like it's a little bit more bulky. You know, this is something special. And that's exactly what I think when, what design is all about, what's important. Uh, that's this. Beautiful. But almost 18k, yeah. What do you buy for 18k? You buy yourself a nice car. Is this a future classic? I don't know yet. But it's definitely a special car. And it looks good. Paint job still looks good. The rims look good. It all looks... But it's probably had a, a, a professional detail going on. January 2004. So this was kind of a run-out model of the uh, first generation. The first generation RS S6. And this was the C5 for all the people that like this. This is the Audi A6 C5. Um, all right, we're going to move on, see what else we got. 2011, how can it be 20K? Oh, this is the 3, the TFSI RS. This is the RS line or something. Yeah, the RS Quattro Pro line. Another thing, what I don't like about Audi, they, they got so mixed up in this AMG line and this M line, and now we have this RS line. Like, it looks like you got something. Okay, a 3 liter TFSI, it will do the trick, but it's not an RS product. It's not even an S product. Stop with that. This is where marketing goes too far, you know, but that's, that's my opinion. Um, See, 2004, 200,000 kilometers driven, still 25K. And this is 2004. So this was also a late model of that first generation. Yeah, 200,000 kilometers driven, guys. And those those kilometers are probably hard. You know, they di they're driven hard. Please. Oh, all right, here we are. Look at that grill. Look at it. I will not uh, take too much time over this generation, but this is for me, this is a generation. And even though they didn't refine this car yet, because it was the first time they put a big V8 in a car like this, just to compete uh, with the likes of BMW and Mercedes, of course, and we had a few fast Jaguars with also V8s, of course, because, and then real, real driven. Uh, but this also offers the Quattro uh, pack. So when you go into the mountains and it's snowing or it's raining or whatever the weather conditions is, this car can go way further than any Mercedes or BMW that only had rear wheel drive. So that was a real appeal. Would, would be, would be uh, a good, unique selling point for me to go for an Audi instead of a Mercedes Benz. But it really depends on where you're going to use this for. If you also want to... Um, have a, a trailer hitch behind the car and then towed stuff, four wheel drive is always going to come in handy. And back then, uh, the older uh, German luxury manufacturers, they only had rear wheel drive. So this was a unique selling point back in the day. And Quattro, they stick to it. And now we have four Matic and we have X Drive and all those kind of things. But Audi was the original, uh, the OG, the original gangster, the, you know? It's no way around it. Very uh, recent pictures I see. I still see the LCD uh, screen is still intact normally after, yeah, nearly 20 years old. Uh, uh, it's gonna fail on you, but 
this one didn't. I think it's it's an overall great condition. But 200,000 kilometers in a car like this, yeah, it is a V8, but it's probably hard miles. I don't know how it's driven, and you have to see if it's a steady pace, if it was a daily driver or a weekend car. And yeah, this shifter really reminds me of the Polo. Uh, and in a sense, Volkswagen is the European equivalent of General Motors, I would say. You can call me out on that, but it's like I make one gearbox and I can uh, place it in my Volkswagen, in my Audi, in my Skoda, in anything else, not in Porsche. They, they have their own one and it's for very obvious reasons. They will work for 80, 85% of the people. No one will complain, but the people that understand driving and that uh, drive a lot of different cars, they see uh, the downsides in it. But if you don't, you're going to be completely happy. And it's just that mindset applied to cars that most of the people are going to be happy with an Audi because give it any kind of condition, any kind of weather type, it's going to be fine. You know, you're not going to say, hey, I, I missed half a second of response time. And when I do this, it does this. And I was expecting this and that. Most people wouldn't. Fun fact, by the way, this car, this C5, I'm just seeing it on the other screen. I like facts, hope you do too. Uh, a little bit more over 80,000 were uh, produced, not more, worldwide. So it's it's quite a rare, rare car, uh, but in the early 2000s, not a lot of people want to spend that much money on Audi. They rather had a BMW or a Mercedes Benz because they were more established brands. This is from a time where where Audi still had to establish itself. And now it is established. And now when it is established, yeah, it, it lost its charm. Audi should be an underdog. It should be an underdog. It shouldn't be screaming and shouting like a BMW or like a little bit statement. Yeah, statement. Yeah, that's the debate about Mercedes and BMW. I mean, I think BMW is more screaming and shouting, showing, hey, I, I love to drive and I got money and this and that. And Mercedes is a little bit more, you know, when you drive in it, you drive lots of miles in one day and you get out in one piece, you look behind, it's like, that's a great car. It's different, you know? Um, yeah, and also it's uh, for the people that are so obsessed by brands, Audi used to be a nice alternative to those. But now um, Audi is screaming and shouting as well. And it's attracting a lot of BMW customers that want an Audi instead of a BMW. Because BMW is now focused so much on China and on the United States. Um, and in Europe, we don't like those designs. We don't like it. It's too, too shouty. It's so screaming. When I look at those new BMWs, and that's the last thing I'm going to tell you about that brand, it's like you lost it. You totally lost it. Like all the brand values... When you look at the E39 M5, that's the pinnacle of BMW engineering. You had the E46, uh, the E39, yeah, think about the E38 7 Series, that was the pinnacle. Maybe because of the age I have, but when you really, when you truly look at design, that was the pinnacle. It showed that you had class, it showed that you had money. Uh, when you get inside it, you can feel its great quality, but it's not too shouty about itself just right all right moving on let's see um we are gonna move on no no one on the chat but it's okay it's just a monday now what time we have it let's see oh perfect 2013 10 years old 40 the divas i rs6 50k for a 10 year old car with black alloys hope it came from the factory like this should 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 be it's an rs6 right also a very nice generation and let me see if i know this is 2013 so i should go here i like it a second screen actually 2013 no it was not was not the c6 it was the c7 the first year of the C7 and that was built until now. It's still being built, but it probably already had a facelift and the engine was the four liter V8. 
Now, let me see. Can I scroll? Yes. So this is currently still being built. But I'm sure it, it, very soon a new RS6 is being introduced. So it's actually a good time to do a video like this. Yeah. Let me see. It has 560 horsepower and it has 412 newton meters. No, it has was 700 newton meters of torque. Excuse me. Yeah, this is on another level, guys. This is this is when Audi uh, sold a lot of cars, especially to the uh, European lease market. They they sold a lot of 1.8 uh, turbos, uh, petrol, a lot of two liter TDI diesels. Uh, they made a lot of money from that, and um, this is just a showcase of what a brand can do. Uh, nothing more than that, you know. The the best seats, the best materials from that time period corrected. This car is uh, 10 years old. 10 years ago, this was the pinnacle of Audi. You know, nice LCD screens, uh, probably much more upgraded um, a DSG that was able to handle 700 newton meters of torque. Um, great seats. It's always a little bit German, a little bit dark, a little bit this and that. But when you sit in it and, and you flying down the Autobahn, this is a car like you can you can go from from the Netherlands to Italy. That's always like the, the, the yardstick when it comes to a great engineering. You can you can go there. No problem. No problem. Eight speed automatic. It was imported as well, which is always a bit tricky. Look at this, 605 horsepower from a 4 liter V8, probably by turbo as well, but 50k after 10 years. With this, I don't believe this, and that's that's the worst thing about these kind of cars. Like 155, it's not that it cannot handle it, but what kind of miles are that? You know, did the guy properly warm up the engine before he starts playing with it? Did he drove with it to Italy once a year, once a month? Or, or did he only, what kind of life did it have? It, it, the, the, the service repair bill will also show you part of the, the story, but it's quite a lot of money. But when you look at the car, it didn't have that much kilometers yet, but for a performance car, it does, if it makes any sense. Let's try to move on. Anything special you see here also 2013 we just covered that it's about the same a little bit more kilometers even this is a newer one so the, oh, this is already the facelift but this is 50 TDI S line this is not an RS6 look at that guys it still costs so much money and this is probably the fastest diesel they have the, the 50 TDI I'm a little bit lost touch with, with what Audi uh, has nowadays used to be very simple you had the uh, the 1.6 TDI, the 2 liter TDI, the 2.5 TDI, the 3 liter, and that was it, I think. Uh, so maybe this is a 3 liter. Let me let me see. But this is a TDI. <laughs> this is the car that Batman would drive, I would say. Moving on. Let's see. This is so up to date, 2019. It's uh, yeah, four years old now. But this is what uh, they still push to nowadays. What rolls out of the factory this generation? See, it's all upgraded a bit. That maybe it has nine speeds now. I don't know. Let, let me uh, go into the configuration later. 3D camera system to give you an idea of the position of the car in any tight spot. Let's see. Camera, apps, give me some details. Let's go back. This is only pictures, that's fine. Then we go back up here and we're gonna do this. Yeah. Ah, need to click here, fantastic. Give me some specs specifications so diesel yes five door 1865 kilograms six cylinder three liter with 286 horsepower that's nice 
Uh, anything else? No turbo, non turbo. How many Newton meters? Didn't say. This is it. Okay. 286 horsepower. Through it, yeah, okay. This is probably a top uh, spec model. And as, uh, uh, this is the 50 TDI and it was a three liter uh, six cylinder turbo diesel. Yeah, this is the top spec model. Almost almost 300 horsepower from diesel, which is, yeah, you, it's, it's plenty, you know. 2013, 140, look at the prices here. I don't know if you guys watching from Germany or somewhere else, but uh, don't you think we overpay here for cars like this? I mean, these are like, this is the top automobile. This is the, 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 the highest in the food chain when it comes to uh, motoring, but quite expensive, I would say. Two thousand sixteen. See if we still get some old stuff. Let me see the cheapest one. That's always fun. Oh, the cheapest one we already had. This is, but this is not a real one. This is two thousand six with almost three hundred thousand kilometers driven. Uh, this is the two thousand six. At what I said, yes. Let me see again. That means that it's still the C five. Yeah, exactly. This is the facelift. No. Two thousand six. I'm wrong. This is the C6. Wow. Yeah. I know this garage. This is a, a let's see, where is he? Heerle? Yeah, yeah. For the province where I uh, was born. This is a, a scam artist. Hope you're watching too. No, this is, this is a, a scam artist. You know, look at this car. Like, who's going to spec this like, like this? It, Anyway, this is a petrol at 3.2, 5K. Look at the seats. What do you expect for 5K? I mean, you can still buff it out. You can, uh, you can, you can clean it up definitely. But is it worth it? I think it maybe it's dr driven double. Who knows? Look at the seats. 300,000 kilometers is, huh? In what, 17 years? Do I say that correctly? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, you shouldn't buy a car like this for 5K. Let me put it like that. You shouldn't. And when the car is running and you see there's no petrol out there, I know that they always do that when they store cars and stuff, but... Uh, it 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 looks wrong. Look at this. It's 2006. Back then it was great, but uh, yeah. Now this is aftermarket. Yeah. What do you expect for 5K? I mean, you 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 buy no Audi for that. And these kind of cars. But this is the 3.2. I'm I'm interested in the specs. Let me let me go back. But this is a scam artist. I mean. Uh, the 3.2 FSI, maybe maybe it's the same kind of engine that went in the Audi uh, R32, the Golf, the Golf. And also the Audi A3 had the 3.2, which was a top spec model. So it does have a lot of configurations in there. And uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. So it is an original Dutch car, which is great because then from the moment it was... Uh, the first license plate was put on it, like uh, the, the registration of miles and uh, the history is uh, recorded well. That's always a plus. 80 liter fuel tank, six cylinders at 3.1, pushing out 256 horsepower. Great. So it is potent. And it had the 3.2 six cylinder. Voor and achter means uh, in the front and in the back. So it is a quattro also. This third is going to drink heavily. 
and it already done a lot of miles. It looks nice. I mean, you could put it on the porch for 5k. I mean, but uh, yeah, it throws me off a bit. But you shouldn't buy a car like this for 5k. I mean, you should double up or triple up. 15k is the minimum. Look at this. You're also not going to buy something like this. It looks great, but they already removed the plates, what we talked about earlier. I mean, that that's just shady, you know? But that's how I look at cars. And uh, whenever I'm thinking, I'm just translating to you guys so you have an understanding how I think and how I feel. And maybe it can help you in your search for a car like this. Let me just pick out one more. And then the, we, we call it quits. And we can ha have a nice test on the my new infrastructure to do a live stream. And uh, I actually just like I just moved into a new place and uh, I still have a GoPro waiting for me upstairs. Maybe I'm going to do some different kind of live streams in the future, but you can expect at least once a month all year round. Uh, that's what I promise. I love to make it and now I have a bit more time. So, uh, yeah, one more. Let's see. Well, I saw this one, so I'm going to open this one. 2004 is also the last year that they built this one let's see what they want from it okay this is the okay the 4.2 22 000 and a half more than 200 000 kilometers yeah. driven let's see mm -hmm. i do love the grill i do love the grill i do love the rims it's it's nice but Ah, this is a good car. I don't know. The 4.2 V8 is quite reliable. It's been around for many times. I think this is an adjusted version of what they already put in the Audi V8. Um, and I think the Audi V8 is from the 80s, the late 80s, when Audi tried to compete with the likes of Mercedes and BMW. But uh, Audi always stick to, with the 4.2. Uh, I think it's a, it's a naturally aspirated engine and they are very powerful, uh, but they're very uh, racy also. You need to rev them quite high and they're very thirsty when you do so. They give you a nice sound. Um, yeah, what, what can I say? Audis are, are like items. They're just like an iPhone, right? I mean, almost everyone can use them and, and get the hang of it real quick. And the same with an Audi. It's not like a BMW that you have to learn what's the limit and this and that. I mean, Audi, this is a Quattro. They always put Quattro on their top spec models so they can put the power to the road more evenly divided between the front and the rear wheels, which make the car more safe as well. I mean, if you have five, six hundred horsepower on the rear wheels only and the weather is not good, you're going to spin out, you know. Um, even very experienced drivers will sometimes just say, Ooh, that was not what I, what I meant to do. You know, you only have like, what, like this much of rubber on each side with so much power, it's going to go wrong. You know, it's going to, you're going to end up in a ditch one time, but not with an Audi. Something with the brakes, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what can I say? It looks okay, but it's used. Done quite a lot of kilometers, actually, especially for a performance car. And yeah, it's a V8. But you can also think I'm, I'm buying this for 22 and a half. I'm going to put another 10K down. 450 horsepower. It's plenty. And especially when the car hit the market in 2002, this was a game changer. This was really Audi's attempt to stir up the big three. And since then, they're part of the big three. And the big three, Mercedes, Audi, BMW, right? And I think you had the M5 Touring. You also had that. They never built and sold as much as the Audi. You had the E63 AMG Estate. They also had that, but, but everyone went to the Audi. I don't know exactly why. Maybe because it had Quattro. Or maybe because it was a bit cheaper. But nowadays, Audi is not that cheap anymore. What's the attraction of this? I think it's the attraction is when you look at it from the side, you think, wow, oh, it's a nice car. 
but you don't think nothing special of it. I mean, this could be an S line or something. What Audi does all the time nowadays. See, they have an S line, still what a 1.4 four cylinder, you know. But back then, they had special rims for this special occasion because this was a special car. I don't know. This this seems like damage. Um, but even this key, I remember this having the same key with a Volkswagen logo on it. That's typical GM Volkswagen Audi group. Like they only spend money where it matters. And I like that because where it matters is the engine. It's the sound ins insulation. It's the, the quattro four wheel uh, system. It is what matters. Nobody can look at the key. You put it in your pocket or you put it somewhere else. You think I think you think I'm looking twice at my Volvo key? I mean, I don't, and it's fine. It works. It's very robust. Um, the logo you can't scratch off because it's already gone. It's it's well thought out, and and you spend money where money need to be spent. Anyway, let's see. Yeah, NL car, so it's original uh, Dutch car. And for a lot of people, including me, that's just an uh, added, added thing. Because when these cars get imported from Germany, because German people buy these cars because they, they need to conquer the Autobahn every day. When you got a good job and uh, you're working maybe 100, 150 kilometers from where you live and you need to blast down the highway every day, you want a good car. And when you, when you got deep pockets and you can pay for all the fuel, what does it matter? Especially, especially the mindset back then. I mean, we're talking 20 years ago. Nowadays, people don't do that no more. Uh, but I understand. So you import a car like that. And these cars, even at the Autobahn, they had a hard life. Because when when I'm in Germany, every time I'm in Germany and I'm driving the highway, and you have the speed limit 60, 80, uh, behind 80, and you see in the, the distance, you see the, um, the mark unlimited, everybody floors the car. They all floor them, like there's no tomorrow. And these cars are, are built for that. They can do that, but, but why? You can even throttle the car at 60, 70% at most. It's fast enough. But all the way, right? It's, it's all to show like what I have. This is like, um, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon. But I understand that, like... When you have 4.2 liters V8 with one or two turbos, not in this generation, by the way, this is all naturally aspirated. But you, when you have that under your right foot, you want to feel it. And look at this front. Yeah, it's outdated by now. But can you think about it when this is what 20, uh, the, when this was 2002? And still to this day, I appreciate it. It's yeah, it's outdated. I already told you that. But it has a certain class about it that I still to this day appreciate. Uh, it's not too screamy, too shouty, but you got something special here. And um, when you do a trip from Holland to uh, Italy and you go through Germany, you go to Austria or Switzerland and, and it was, it's raining there or it's a little bit still icy or slippery because you can go there twice a year. You can go there either for the summer vacation, which is now, or you can go there in autumn in the winter to go skiing you want a nice comfortable car with lots of with lots of horsepower uh, but you want to make sure that that power goes to the road equally and in a safe manner there's no other way to look around this one all right anyway guys i'm going to close off this live stream it's also a monday for me still need to go back to work i just wanted to uh, show you guys that i'm back online and that you can expect more live streams coming from now on and uh, i still need to settle down here i'm in this new location for about a week um it's been a tough while you know it's been it's been uh, quite uh, how do i say this still got a lot of things to do actually but uh, i just thought i have half an hour and then i just make a live stream I hope you appreciate that. And uh, as always, uh, please let me know what kind of cars you want me to review. I love doing this. I mean, for me, it's unscripted. It's just out of the top of my head. So I love these, doing these. And uh, for the few people that really appreciate them, uh, I, I like it. I keep on doing the, those buying reviews because uh, 
that's what I got big with. And that's also like what I like to do, do some research some proper research, but this, these live streams for me, it's like a, a breath of fresh air. So thanks for watching this uh, live stream. And uh, we hope you guys are all good. Hope you have a great summer and uh, catch you one, catch you all in the ne next one. Thanks for watching.